Shabbat Shalom, my friends. Well, I take a lot of medications, and thankfully, I have a pretty good, though heavily used, medical insurance setup. But every year, I run into something known as a donut hole. You know what I mean? Sadly, this is not the kind of donut hole that one could purchase from Tim Hortons in Canada or Krispy Kreme in Atlanta and all across the United States. The medical insurance donut hole has something to do with Medicare coverage. At a certain point, I will need to pay out-of-pocket expenses. Truth be told, I resent this kind of donut hole, whether or not Medicare gives me a cup of coffee along with the invoice. But having left Shavuot, and with a long way to go until we get to Tisha B'Av, we Jews are kind of in a donut hole in our calendar. There is Shabbat, of course. But other than that, we can just relax, relax for a while, and enjoy our weekly study. And maybe while we're at it, munch on a real donut, careful not to get the crumbs on the text. Our sedra is not so. Numbers chapter 4, verse 21 and following. What a rich sedra it is. The accused adulteress, the priestly benediction, the Nazarite who abstains from many of life's pleasures. Let's take a bit of a dive into the priestly benediction. Shai held is correct when he notes that this threefold benediction, this blessing, is among the best known and most deeply treasured segments of the Torah. So, here are some did you knows. There is a crescendo to the blessings. Three words, five words, seven words. Okay, that's a did you know. As practiced today, before the Kohanim, and this refers obviously to congregations in which Kohanim, the priests, have a unique role that is still recognized and honored. Before the Kohanim can bless the people, they leave the sanctuary. As a kid, I was desperately curious, what are they doing out there? And... I was too shy to ask. Answer. They went out so as to remove their shoes and to allow the Levites to help them wash their hands. Only then could they come to the front and bless. And when they came to the front, they should be standing on some sort of platform. The Yiddish word for such a platform is what? Duchan. Right. So that when the priestly benediction is recited, the priests are said to be duchaning. That's a great example of taking a noun, shifting it into a verb. When I led services in Mumbai, I was instructed to take my shoes and socks off, somehow being barefoot is a key to blessing. And just because you are a Kohen doesn't mean you are automatically qualified to Duchen. Not at all. You must not be physically disfigured, especially your hands must not be disfigured. And just because you are a Kohen doesn't mean that you can just stand up there and utter the words of the threefold blessing. Nope, not at all. A lay person stands near the Kohanim and says the words which they then repeat word for word. No mistakes permitted. And the Kohanim bring their hands together 
so that their fingers make the shape of a shin. For Shaddai, one of the names for God. And yes, it is true. Leonard Nimoy knew all about this. What he popularized the gesture of blessing, live long, and prosper. The power of those blessing hands was such that as uplifted as they were, they still had to be covered by a talit. The hands in blessing, very powerful. As further protection, the fathers in the congregation had to bring their children beneath their talitot to keep them from looking directly at the koanim who were doing the duchanim. And now, one additional did you know. In preparing for this week, I read some of the teachings prepared by Rabbi Shlomo Riskin. And I learned something totally new to me, totally new. According to chapter 9 of the Talmud text of Brachot, as the Kohanim were preparing to bless the people, they would recite the following. Master of the universe, I am yours and my dreams are yours. So may you transform all of my dreams for myself and for all of Israel into good dreams. May you guard over me, be gracious to me, and accept me. Were the rabbis in Brachot saying at this moment that the blessings of the Kohanim were actually expressions of the dreams that they had for the Jewish people. Blessings, dreams. I think so. And I have to tell you, I find this particular insight enormously moving. The passage in Brachot concludes that the congregation would then respond to the Kohanim by saying, Master of the universe, I am yours and my dreams are yours. It's almost as if we're being told not to focus so very much on the exact words of the threefold blessing. May God keep you, may God's face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, may God grant you peace. Good, nice words. Move past those very familiar words and discover that the blessings we really want and that the blessings we really need, what we really need is for our dreams and for the dreams that we would ascribe to God, that those dreams would be congruent, that they should be able to live side by side. The dreams of one would not require the annulling of the dreams of the other. The dreams of one would make the dreams of the other possible. When we bless our children and grandchildren, when we bless our communities, barefoot or not, covered by a huge talit or not, can there be a greater blessing that flows from us than one that emerges because we know the other, that we understand the other, that we realize the great joy that awaits those whose dreams are fulfilled. My friends, that's a real blessing. Not all of our dreams are worthy we know that. Not all of our dreams would bring blessings to our loved ones, blessings to our world. We know that. May it be 
that the dreams you have are of one piece with what we can imagine that God's dreams for us might be. And may those dreams be fulfilled in our lifetime. This changes the very atmosphere, the dynamic of blessing. I couldn't utter such a blessing if I did not love the other. I couldn't utter such a blessing if I really didn't know the other. I couldn't utter such a blessing if our dreams weren't pointed toward a world striving to be the best, the best for all of us and not just a few. That's the key to this understanding of the threefold blessing. The power of blessings resides in our noblest dreams and not just in the recitation of sacred words. You know, the more we wrestle with Torah, the more light it brings into our lives. May it ever be so. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy the donut hole. See you next week.